Hey guys, Damon FEV here. Welcome back to one of my elements series. Today we're going to talk about the corkscrew. The corkscrew is one of my favorite elements, and what it really is is when you have multiple gates placed side by side and you go through them from the same direction, the fastest way is we can flip over them individually, and as you can see over here, as you go to the next one. The motion is really cool looking from the first person point of view and also from a third person point of view, and it's something that you can even incorporate into your freestyle moves, for example. You can flip over any horizontal bar that you see. It's a lot of fun to do, and it's a really, really um, great way to really improve your times. Um, it's one of the elements that takes a lot of time if you don't do it right, so it's very key that you learn this element well. The next thing um, I want to mention also is this is one of the elements that I refer to as a perpetual element. Basically, the idea being once you lock in the angle, it can go on forever. It just keeps repeating itself over and over again. Uh, another example of that would be the ladder. Right, um, I'm going to talk about that in the next video. But these are really, really fun ones because you can just lock it in and you keep going forever. And it's super fun. And uh, we're going to go teach you that in Velocidrome just so you can see a little more clearly exactly what I'm doing. So without further ado, let's go into Velocidrome. Track and show you how to do the corkscrew. I just want to show the freestylers out there why this could be interesting for you to learn and how you can kind of incorporate some racing moves into your freestyle repertoire, right? So, for example, here, I'm corkscrewing the crane, right? Crash into that a little bit, but the idea is it's interesting, right? You're basically doing a corkscrew motion through these crane elements. That's kind of fun. It's something new, something a little bit different. So to begin, the corkscrew is really about being able to go through a row of gates from the same side. So what you can really do in the beginning, well, uh, while you're trying to figure out how to do it, is something like this, right? You go through, you do a quick U-turn, and then you do a U-turn over, and you pop back over, right? And that's a valid way of doing a corkscrew. It's totally legal, and you can do that at a race while you're still learning how to corkscrew, right? Over, U-turn, U-turn. And the good thing, too, is you kind of get a sense for what the motion would be. Now, once you've kind of figured that out and gotten used to that, you can start doing a proper corkscrew. Now, for the corkscrew, the execution piece, which is the middle part, is the part that I refer to as perpetual. And I'm going to show you really quickly what that really means, right? Once you've kind of locked in that angle, you can basically go on forever. Right? If there was another gate here, I would go through it, right? That's what that means. The other piece, too, is there's obviously the entry and the exit. And the entry, the key to entry is really about being able to enter at a speed that you're comfortable with so that you'll be able to do the course through. And then the exit is just unwinding the move. Now, let me break this move down for you. Right. What this move really is, is it's a mixture of a roll, a pull back with a pitch, and a little bit of yaw to the side. Right. So if I'm doing a right course through, I'm going to be moving my, bottom, uh, my right stick to the bottom right, and my left stick slightly to the right, right? as you can see here. See that? There. That's what a corkscrew looks like. Now, some common mistakes when you first start out is if you don't give it enough roll, you end up doing some kind of power loop like that, right? And you're completely blind. You never want to be blind, especially when you're racing, right? So, take a look. Right? I'm pulling back, but I'm completely blind. And I can't see the gate until I fall back. And that will not work, right? So, how you fix that is to give it much, much more roll. You're going to give it much more roll than you think, and you're almost going to be coming at it. You're basically flipping over it sideways, really. And that's what that is, right? You're going to aim at the bottom right-hand corner with your right stick. Now, onto the yaw side. Without yaw, if you don't put it any yaw, what you end up doing is you basically kind of start falling over sideways, right? So you take a look. I'm not giving a yaw. You're kind of falling over sideways. And that's because you're basically just rolling to the side, and what that does is your quad's just kind of flipping over like that, right? It's just going over and it falls over, right? So what you gotta do is you gotta give it a slight bit of yaw, much less than the roll, just to compensate enough to keep your screen somewhat low, right? To work, right? See how my, my, right, uh, my left stick is a little bit to the right? That's the important part. Now, once you've kind of gotten this motion down, the key here is really to keep your eyes aimed at the top corner. Right? So if you're doing a right corkscrew, I'm always staring at the top right-hand corner of the gate. If you do it right, the top right-hand corner of the gate should always be in the center of your view. Take a look at that, right? 
I'm always staring at the next gate's top right hand corner, and as I'm going through the gate itself, I'm staring at the own, own gates. Take a look, all right? Top right hand corner, and B. There you go. So that's one. Positioning and it's where you're staring at is hugely important. The second piece is really around your sticks, right? If you notice what I'm doing with core screws, I'm not making a lot of major adjustments, right? I made a small adjustment there, and I shouldn't be. Once you get that locked in, the motion should continue itself forever, right? And that's how you know you've kind of gotten the good feel for the motion, right? The motion should keep going on forever, and it's nice and smooth, and it's a perfect circle. If you, you're making adjustments along the way, you're going to be blowing out parts of it, right? Take a look at this, right? So, see? I still did it, but, like, you know, it's, it's not a circle anymore. It's, it's more like an ellipse, right? That's not what you want. And that's because you're, you're making massive adjustments, and you're, you're also not kind of starting the motion right. All right, so important part, again, is to make sure it's smooth, and your motion stays somewhat constant. You made a mistake there. Um, and the key to doing that is really just start slow, right? The slower your speed is, the less stick you're gonna have to give to, to keep it, oh, sorry, flowing nicely, right? The, the faster you go, the more stick you're gonna have to give, right? So if you go fast, for example, like, notice how my right stick is almost at the bottom. I'm almost bottom, bottoming out my right stick. And that's because I'm trying to go faster, right? The faster you go, oops, sorry. The faster you go, the more stick you're gonna have to give to be able to keep yourself not from blowing out, right? So if I give you an example here, if I'm going too fast, and I'm not giving enough stick, this is what happens, right? This is a massive course. I mean, it still kind of works, but that's slow, right? That's not fast. You really want to be able to keep it as tight as possible, where you're almost just kind of backflipping over the gate, right? And that's what you want. Oops. So, again, the key here is you're going to give a lot more right stick to the bottom right, as you think, a little bit of yaw, and you want to keep your throttle constant as you go through, right? As you get more comfortable, you can have a higher point of throttle for it, and that's okay. But when you start out, you want to keep it a bit, little bit lower to start. So that is the course through execution piece, right? Just keep practicing this, and the goal being that you want to get as close to the gate as possible, right? Where you're basically just doing backflips over the gate. And as you do that, you go faster and faster, you're going to be able to shave off a ton of time. Now that you've gotten the execution out of the way, and as you mentioned, um, if you do it right, you should basically go on forever. But the problem is, how do you get into it, right? The entry to a corkscrew is hugely important, right? With the GQ, you have a nice kind of uh, split S over it that helps you scrub off a lot of speed that naturally puts you in the corkscrew, right? So, in the video earlier, you kind of flip over it, and you're basically already kind of doing a, a half corkscrew when you're coming over, right? And so your motion's kind of already there. Uh, that and you, you're, you're kind of doing that right so the key really is to enter at an angle and at the right speed if you go too fast you're going to blow out the first turn and you're going to have to do a lot of work to get the second core screw in right and a very easy way to tell if you're going too fast is if your first core screw is way bigger than your second one, right see like once i get into the groove i can tighten it up but my first one's way too big right see See how my first one's really big and my second one's much tighter? That's how you know you're going in too fast. So how do you combat that? You can start straight, trying by scrubbing off speed, right? So depending on how your track's laid out, for example, if it's laid out this way, I can go into it, and then I'll start by turning early, right? So I start pre-turning a lot earlier than you would think, right? See how I pulled up my stick before I even got to the gate? And that's how I can help scrub off some speed, right? See that? I'm, I'm starting off the turn a lot earlier than you think, and that's how you scrub off speed. The other way, obviously, is if, if you're coming from behind, and you're going to scrub speed off this way, and go to the first group, right? So that's the entry. The key really is make sure you're entering at the right speed, and at a speed that you're comfortable, and also from the right angle. Um, it's usually best to enter slightly from the side, just because that's the direction of motion that you're going for, right? So if you're entering slightly off the center, that's better, typically. Um, you can also enter head-on. You're just going to do, do a bit more work to get into that, uh, that groove. Right? And the last part is really about an exit. Right? As I mentioned, once you've got that locked in, this motion goes on forever. So how do you unwind it? What you really do is just kind of let go of the right stick, and it kind of naturally levels out, and then you just keep going. So that is the corkscrew. It really just takes a good amount of practice. Um, I would recommend practicing on a simulator. I like Velocidrone, um, just because with the corkscrew, since you're going a little upside down, 
in real life, if you freak out, there's a good chance you might break something. So start by practicing on a simulator first. Get a feel for it. Um, the key parts to remember is, again, one, aim for the top right-hand corner. If you're doing right, top left, you're going left. Always keep that centered in view. Two, don't go too fast. Right? If you're going too fast, you will blow your turns out, and that's not what you want. Keeping it tight is super important, and that's how you're going to be able to go faster and faster. Three is your sticks should, once you lock into that circle, your sticks should be mostly constant. You can make micro adjustments, but you really don't want to make too many changes. The second you start making a lot of changes, instead of doing a nice circle, you're going to do an ellipse where you blow up part of it, and that's unstable. Right? You're going to keep adjusting throughout the entire thing, and that's no good. Right? Lock in both from a roll, yaw, and pitch axis perspective. Lock that in and just keep going. And then the next piece is really around the exit, right? Keep it nice and smooth and just kind of unwind and you'll be able to exit. Yeah. So that's the corkscrew. I hope you learned something today. Um, you can start applying this to your freestyle, as I mentioned. You can just start corkscrewing all sorts of stuff. And to practice is really easy. Right? Just get two gates or three gates, put them side by side and just keep doing it. The next thing to know too is make sure you practice both left and right. Um, a lot of people that practice a lot of the GQ, they're really good at right corkscrews. When you start doing the left, even though it's the same motion, it's not as easy as you think. So practice both sides so you don't have to go through the pain of learning that later. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, I'm going to have a lot more elements coming up, including the ladders, uh, how to do quick U-turns and so forth, and also just simpler stuff for the beginners, so like how to even fly. Right? So if you like this, please, please do subscribe to my channel. It helps a lot. And please also comment below. If you have other ways of doing the corkscrew or if you have other tips that I've missed out, please leave a comment in the below. Uh, I'm sure the other pilots would be very, very appreciative of it as well. And um, I hope to see you next time. Damon out.